Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll talk about site initiation visits. More after the break. After receiving all the necessary approvals, the study can start at the trial site with the site initiation visit. It is important to prepare this visit carefully and strategically. Be aware that you may not be able to meet your time budget for the first visits. Sometimes better visit quality just needs more time and will reduce costs and problems later. For preparation, go through the essential documents such as the final protocol again thoroughly. At the same time, make a checklist of the points that you must definitely address during the interview at the trial site. The first three serve to clarify the questions, such as, which patients are we looking for? How does the visit scheme look like? How is randomization done? At the site initiation, visit all relevant information on a clinical trial have to be explained to the study team in a way that they can actually conduct the study. The better you do this, the fewer problems you will encounter later. For example, the CRF must be explained, especially if they have to work with an eCRF. You can prepare a demo with hypothetical patient data and practice this process on site by first creating a test patient. Tell the investigator how often and when you will come for monitoring. Also talk to the investigator about what might require additional visits in the first place. For example, if there are too many queries or protocol deviations, starting a study is a big challenge for all parties involved. The trial site should be familiarized with a complex procedure. Errors and problems in understanding can easily arise. Your task now is to present this process and the necessary steps clearly enough so that your initiation visit is successful. Before the visit, familiarize yourself with the documents, review the contents, and then bring them to the SIV. On the SIV, many documents have to be worked throughout. The delegation log, which is filed in the investigator's folder, has to be signed by the whole team at the trial site that will work on the study. Then the monitoring log will be filled in. The signed contracts between sponsor and site must be filed provide the screening and enrollment log. This is a list to record the consent and screening of all patients. The eligibility of a patient must be declared with the identification log. This is a list that is intended to serve the safety of the patients included in the trial. Also check that if the essential reference documents are filed. These include defined standards for the work of the investigators and include the Declaration of Helsinki, ICH GCP or the ISO 14155. Check for the completeness and correctness of these standards. The approvals of the regulatory and ethics committees must also be available in the investigator's folder. The insurance documents are the last integral part of the investigator's folder. For example, in Germany, approval studies deal with patient insurance according to AMG or MPG, including the insurance conditions. Make a list of the personnel involved in the study and find out what tasks each person typically undertakes at the trial site. This assignment of tasks will help you to answer the question of how CRF training is handled. Explain the inclusion and exclusion criteria for patients. For example, basically, patients are excluded if it is assumed that the study product is not effective or not safe enough. The knowledge of measurement methods will support your work as a monitor. For each new study, you must know what is to be measured and how it is measured. The question of whether a suitable device is available for the measurement has to be clarified. Many sponsors will also provide you a PowerPoint presentation. It may be worthwhile for you to study this presentation in advance, but presentations are often overloaded. Assume that the investigator will not have the time to see the whole presentation, including the entire company history. You may not delete anything in the presentation, but you can make a selection in advance. In the declaration of consent of the patients, care must be taken to mark the essential points once again. 
Discussion of the expanse allowance is one of the pragmatic aspects of your work. Thereby, you clarify with the investigator which regulations you are aiming at, for example, for the reimbursement of travel expenses for the patients. Make clear that the use of patient diaries is standard in many studies for the verification and recording of secondary endpoints, and in some cases, even of primary endpoints. In the case of data that are documented directly by the patient, it is extremely important that the physician carries out a check immediately after the data have been completed. It should also be made clear that auditors or inspectors may visit during the study. As a monitor, you are protecting patient rights. Consequently, data protection must be pointed out and addressed. The SIV concludes with a follow-up letter. Ideally, it is characterized by a concise, effective style of writing and is limited to the most important points. Put yourself in the workload of an examiner or study nurse for whom even reading a single page can be very tiring. So don't write anything in here that you can still discuss next time at the trial site. You can mark the most important points in the letter. So much about the site initiation visits. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time. Goodbye.